Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Peter Cashin from Imperial Mining. How are you today, Peter? Great, Tracy. Thanks for having me today. It's been too long since we've received an update. What is going on with Imperial Mining? Very busy summer and fall, uh, trying to get our projects up and going since inception in January. Um, a gold project in, in Shibugamu, uh, the South Belt, I told you about, was in a press release um, earlier this week. And then, of course, uh, active on our Crater Lake uh, Scandium project in northeastern Quebec. And we're doing a lot of metals marketing, strategic marketing for Scandium, particularly in the EU and, and uh, US, uh, trying to get a, a pulse of the, of the market, because I think there's some potential big growth happening in the Scandium space. Okay, so you've, you've jumped right into Scandium, so let's go there. Okay. Is it too late to get into Scandium? Because Scandium has had some major movement in the last year. Correct. Um, well, I, I bring note uh, attention to that uh, Bloomberg article at the end of October and speaking to the Scandium market, some of the players are in there. Um, I was particularly surprised and pleased of the, the projections on consumption by 20, 2035 of 1,800 tons of Scandium. The current players, the advanced players that are in the Scandium space have maybe 400, so I think there's a lot of opportunity for, for new players to come in and establish themselves in what I think is going to be a huge market going forward. Some of you out there may not be aware of the fact that Peter Cashin is one of the most respected uh, experts and knowledgeable players in the critical material sector, so I'm going to ask you to dumb it down for me. Is it too late to get into the Scandium market? Not at all. I think that there's an opportunity for growth. Um, I think we're just in the early, early stages. Uh, the, the benefits of Scandium are really uh, fully understood starting in the 1970s, and lots of R&D capacity went into learning the product and learning its benefits and looking for new markets. But all of that was pulled, the plugs were pulled on all that R&D initiative back in 2012 because they couldn't get any sustainable supply. It was China or Russia, and those aren't reliable supply chains. Um, but you're starting to see the peers, my peers now getting back into R&D with uh, uh, industry leaders. And uh, that's usually a precursor for, for uh, explosive growth in the market. Okay, I heard that. Precursor for explosive growth in the market. I'm also seeing here that you just put out a news release about mining samples at Crater Lake Project in Quebec. Can you talk to us about these samples? Well, Crater Lake is our flagship, and, and it's a large intrusive complex. We knew about Scandium back in 2014 when I was running Quest for Minerals. Um, and uh, we did our work. We understand that there's about a seven, six kilometer long horizon that's uh, very enriched in scandium that we've only just started to dust off now. And this past summer was exactly uh, intended to start opening out the zone, try to fully understand it and sample along its length for the purpose of identi identifying additional drill targets. I'm going to take this opportunity to also ask you about rare earths. Uh, some people are discussing, especially on investor intel, that they're making a comeback. What are your thoughts on rare earths? Well, you know, again, we're, full, we're solely reliant on the Chinese for supply. And, and uh, in any instance that, the, that they can, they'll try to manipulate the market. In the instance of this, it's a bit of pushback from the tariff war with the United States. And I think until we establish alternative supply chains, uh, supply sources, this is going to continue. So I think it's imperative on industry, especially the consumers that have vested interest in having this product, to, to maybe jump in there like they have in the lithium space and get directly involved with uh, the resource development phases of projects. Um, they, they tend to be... Um, uh, uh, shy away from uh, involvement with uh, mineral development, but I think if they really want this stuff, they should, uh, the industry needs their support because uh, conventional investors, most of the market players don't like rares because they're, they're very, okay, they're traded opaquely. And, uh, but there's huge value that can potentially be made there. And if we, I mean, there's lots of players, there's a lot of resources, lots of exploration was done between 09 and 2011, as you can remember. Uh, and there's some resources in advanced stages of development that just need the money to get, uh, get on the go. 
So Imperial Mining, we've got sustainability, we have a, a critical material resource in North America, and of course you're aggressively leading this march. Can you give us an update on the competitive advantages of why to get into Imperial Mining today? Well, I think it's I don't I think it's important for your audience to understand what the, the sheer benefits of scandium are. It's a hardener of aluminum alloys. It it uh, provides strength. It provides flexibility. It renders the alloy to be um, to be uh, corrosion resistant. I think uh, Robert Friedland had it right in saying that scandium is a spice metal. You put a little bit of scandium, 0.2 to 0.4 percent, into aluminum uh, alloys, and you can uh, uh, almost double the uh, the the tension and, and uh, uh, the, the strength of the alloy itself. So I, I think that uh, going forward we have a North American source. It's unusual in that it's hard rock. Most of our peers have laterite deposits in Australia. They're in advanced stages of development. And I think that uh, we could actually process our material using much more conventional uh, metallurgical processes. Okay, so you've got us interested. Scandium, Time to get in, Sustainab sustainability, North America. We have great leadership, of course, and a tremendous board on uh, imp imperial mining. What should we as shareholders anticipate, say, this next quarter, Peter? Uh, right now, we've done all of our evaluative work. Um, our gold project is ready for drilling. Uh, the Scandium project, project in particular is we've got our targets lined up. Um, we've we've seen some very very high grades of scandium related to the Crater Lake project up to 2,500 grams per ton. When 250 is considered reasonable threshold for an economic deposit, so our intention now is to diamond drill that, uh, get a resource estimate on it, and then eventually later on in the year file a uh, PEA, and that to me will be the the uh, the trigger I think for more more advanced work on the project itself. For those of you who've made money with Peter Cashin in the past, he's back. So Peter, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Tracy. Much appreciated.